Well, good morning. Welcome to our 11.30 meeting. A warm welcome, both in terms of, it's just great to see you, but it's warm, isn't it? So let's stand, shall we? Let's stand. My name's Richard. I'm one of the leaders here at King's. I'm going to be leading this morning. Special welcome if you're back from New Day. That's a Christian summer event for those aged 12 to 19. So if you're one of those youngsters that went great to have you back, if you were there serving, so good to have you back here with us as well. It's great to have those joining us online too. Psalm 100, verses four to five are wonderful because they tell us two things. They tell us how to approach God and why we should. And it says this, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Talking about God's people here. Give thanks to him and praise his name. So that's what we should do. Be full of thanksgiving, be full of praise. And then the psalmist says, why? He says this, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to praise you. Thank you. It's good to give you thanks. Why? Because you're good. Always, forever, eternally, relentlessly good. And your love is unfailing. And it continues forever and ever and ever and ever. We want to praise you. We want to thank you. We want to glorify you this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Now to give, he is my 
standing. We've got a number of resources on our website at kchw.co.uk forward slash life. A number of resources as we focus in this time uh, sitting at Jesus' feet. And uh, let's remain standing if, uh, if we're in room, if you're at home. Let's watch this short video now. We've been given a gift, one day in every seven, a chance to abandon our busyness and put hurry on hold. To dwell, to celebrate, to play, to delight, to take rest seriously and let God be God. So what's stopping you? Seriously, what's stopping you? Okay, if you'd like to see that, watch that again, you can go to KCHW, go to our website, kchw.co.uk forward slash life or forward slash practices, both will take you there. I'm going to respond to that in a moment. Let's remain standing if we're in room. I felt God's given me a picture as well, and it's for, I believe, for some of us here. Now, on the picture I have, I don't remember the animated film. It's probably about 14 years ago. Wally, a little robot, and he lived in, lived in a rubbish tip. And I feel there's someone here, and you look at your life, and all you can see is brokenness, debris, rubbish. And it's as though all your plans, everything you plan for yourself, what you're just sitting in brokenness and rubbish, it's all, it's all trash around you. Here's the thing. You can't see how that could possibly be cleared up. There's just no way that all that mess, all that debris can be cleared up. And I believe this is what the Lord wants to say to you this morning. It's from Proverbs 19, 21, 22. You may be watching online, this may be for you, someone here in the room, it says this, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a person desires is unfailing love. And what the Lord wants to do for you this morning is this. He wants to start, he wants to start at the core of this. And the core of this is unfailing love. That's the key. If you trust him with that and you receive his unfailing love, what you'll find is he'll come and start to tidy up, put his hands on things, tidy things away that you never thought were possible. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have some rest. We're going to remain standing. If you're watching online, it's going to have some space now. We rush, don't we? Maybe you need to receive that unfailing love and trust the clear up program to Jesus. Maybe that's your moment of rest now. Maybe it's you need to encounter that love which never fails and never stops. Maybe you need refreshment again from the infinite love of Jesus. Maybe you just need some space. Whatever you need, we're going to pause now. Pause for a couple of minutes. Rest, love, receive what you need to receive.
person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, it's unfailing. It's unceasing. It's pure. It's righteous. It's cleansing. It's good. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody here, you may be watching online, maybe in the room, and this is what's going through your head, I believe. No turning back. You've resolved not to turn back, but you're ter- you're where the context is you know that what you're planning to do is destructive. And I believe what Jesus is saying to you this morning is...
to you because you are good, Jesus. And your love is unfailing and it goes on forever. And we praise you because we receive this love and we live it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, before we sit down, if we haven't sat down, for those of us who are in the room, let's greet the number of guests, visitors here this morning. Let's turn around, greet one another. If you're watching online, we will be back with you shortly. Thank you. seats again just put those conversations on pause maybe pick them up at the end of the meeting so good to see you this morning in this warmth it has been warm this week hasn't it so um, let's take our seats welcome back for those who are watching online if you are new maybe watching online or you're in the room and you're brand new we'd love to get to know you so if you're here in person this morning got a welcome area that's over on my left-hand side, your right-hand side, between those two welcome manners. We'd love to talk with you, answer any questions that you have and get to know you. So if you've got time at the end of the meeting, please do come to our welcome area. If you're watching online, please go to kthw.co.uk forward slash life. Click on I'm new and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Well, we're continuing our series, uh, Sit at His Feet, Sit at Jesus' Feet series. And this morning we've got Stuart Reed coming to speak to us, talking about Jesus, the intercessor and advocate. And for those of us who are in the room, can we in a moment make Stuart feel very, very welcome? So let's welcome Stuart as he comes to speak. Oh, thank you, Richard. Good morning. Lovely morning. It's lovely this good weather, isn't it? I like it. Because I was brought up with this, you see, in where I come from. Thank you, thank you. I love this stuff, it's great. Anyway, John very kindly has given me two texts, and I really want to do a Bible story this morning uh, on these two wonderful scriptural texts as we look at Jesus the intercessor, and they'll come up um, shortly. But um, the, the question really is, will we make it? A guy came to me the other day and said, would he make it in the Christian life? And the, at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, the Bishop, Archbishop of York said he thanked, he was grateful that she had stayed the course. And, um, well, I think that's really our passion, isn't it? How do we persevere? Because actually we do things that are really wrong and we're ashamed and we... And sometimes we feel so dry and we don't believe anything. We're only here because our relatives brought us here. And we feel, we feel good about that. <laughs> but you know, How are we going to make it? Because some didn't and some haven't. So, you know, um, how are we going to make it? And um, it's a miracle you say that I'm here this morning. Well, with whether I is, it probably is. <laughs> but um, he's writing to these... This, the, the letter of the Hebrews is, is written by, it's really a sermon, really, on, based on seven texts, really. But he's writing to these Jewish Christians who are having a really hard time. They've been kicked out of their homes in, because they've followed Jesus. Some have actually lost their property. And some have been persecuted. 
and, uh, and they were just homesick. You know, they, they were probably struggling financially. And some had stopped even attending the meetings. And um, uh, the, the familiar things were missing. You know, when you sinned in the old days, you took a sheep or a goat and you took it to the local priest and he slaughtered it and you, got, you took it to the altar and you were forgiven and all that's gone. All the familiar things you were brought up with are gone and think, am I gonna, how am I going to keep going? And, and really, he's writing that letter to ensure that these, these Christians persevere. And um, how do you do it? And, uh, well, obviously the basic thing is, you, is, it says keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't let your eyes go off Jesus with other things. And that's the, the, the key thing. And before he, as, when he starts his letter, he says, first of all, before we get, go any further, I want you to know who we're worshiping. Jesus is the radiance of the Father's glory, the exact representation of his being. He sustains all things by a word of his power. So listen to him. This is the person we're following. We're not in some peanut thing, some small thing. So I want to look at these texts that have been given. And the first one is, is Hebrews 7 verse 25. I want to leave this with you. If I do nothing else, that would be a great achievement. And he says, therefore he is able, that's Jesus, able to save completely those who come to God through him. Now, I appreciate that save is an old-fashioned word. Well, we don't talk about save. You know, I've, I'm not feeling great, you know, but the kids are a problem and works hard. But, you know, I don't need to save him. I'm quite a good guy. But actually, there's nothing more important. We talk about global warming and financial crisis and racial injustice. There is nothing more important than what this writer is talking about, saving. Because actually, this applies to you and to me. I know it's basics, A, B, C, so, but I don't apologize. I had a conversation last night, and unless you get your diagnosis right, forget about any treatment. Jesus says, look, if you being evil, evil? You see, he's not talking about um, actions. He's talking about attitudes. There is in each one of us a propensity, a desire for me first. Well, say, I don't feel it. Yeah, I don't feel it. But it works out in pride and envy and lust and laziness. I just want to be, you know, I want to run the show. And, and then sometimes I'm surprised. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? It's horrible. You know, it, it bubbles up sometimes, doesn't it? It, take, it sort of takes over. You see, what I want to say, we are moral creatures. We're not sick people. We're not just, I mean, some therapeutic exercise. The basic need of our lives is what we're talking about. That's why this church, we think these are desperately important. <laughs> That's what it's about. And um, we're not talking about specific sins, We'll get, we'll get around to that maybe. But I have to have my way. Blow God, I'll, I'll blow Jesus. I want to run my life. I'm, you know, captain of my soul, all that business. And, um, but actually what Jesus is saying is, look, God is light and in him there's no dark storm. Unless you get this sorted out, you're going to miss the blessings in life which only God can give. And more important than that, if you die with these things unconfessed and undealt with, you will go to a lost conscious eternity forever. So is it, we, we're not playing. I mean, and yet we have some great good news because Jesus, you know, came because he knew we'd lost our way. He said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. Well, how's he do it? How's he do? It? How's he save completely those who come to God through him? Well, someone said, a good Scottish preacher, it's like being a mother. Now there are a few mothers in this room, right? Don't raise your hand. It's all right. Now I, we have four children, and I, the last two, I was at the in the birthing room, wherever it's called, delivery room, and you would agree with me that it's very painful. 
It's excruciatingly painful. Even with the gas and air and epidurals, it is very, very painful. But then the little one comes. Wonderful. There she is. There is. And the obstetrician or the nurse, whatever it is, wipes the baby down and puts it on mum's chest. And you know what? Your troubles are ended. It's true, isn't it? It's mother's, isn't it true? I see a hand. No, I don't see a hand. For the next 18 stroke 55 years, you have to care, feed, you have to care, feed, look after through night and day. The, the, the person next to you is not into delegation at all. A bit of that would come a, that wouldn't come amiss, but he's not responding through the night. And uh, but you know, that's how it is. It's incredibly painful, but you've 18 years at least. Um, now, the, why I say that is because Jesus puts these two, if, if you excuse the illustration, together. And um, that's why the first text that John gave me, I'd like just to put it up, 1 John 2, 1. Can we have that up? 1 John 2, 1? Well, we do it now, read. There we go. There we go. Really, I write this to you so that you will not sin. It's a, it's a, it's a easy to do that. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate, someone who represents us with God. Now, he puts the gospel very briefly and succinctly. He said, look, very succinctly. Firstly, look, who the, he's Jesus. He's fully man. He's a man. He's not an angel or a, a zephyr or anything, you know, something mystical. No, he is a man. He became a man. He understands you. He understands your weaknesses. He has not forgotten what it is to be a man. He, he understands you. Secondly, he says, he is the Christ. He is, that means he is the anointed one. God has sent him. He's his son. God sends his son. Don't ever think that God doesn't care. He sent his best for you. He's the Christ, the anointed one, fully God. But then he says he's the righteous one. That means, you know, he's, he never sinned. Jesus was perfect. And because he is absolutely perfect and holy and just, he can stand before the Father. Because the Father is absolutely holy and just, no one could stand before God unless he was like that. We couldn't do it. So we need someone who God will accept on our behalf, who is perfect and sinless. And, and that, that's, that's what he did. And God, and I said there's a, a verse missing, not missing, following that. I'm sorry, it hasn't got, you know. And it says, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, the propitiatory sacrifice. See, God is angry. That's why the world is as it is. I mean, let's be. God is angry with sinners all day long, the Bible says. We can't sin with impunity. It has wrecked this beautiful world. And God is angry with sin because it's ruined this incredibly beautiful thing. I haven't time to unpack all that. He said, Well, how can God be angry and love at the same time? Well, I, 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 I present my case. I have four children. They're all adults now. They're all parents. Some are grandparents. But would it not be true to say that, you, well, let me point into your case. Have you ever been angry with your children? Yes. But I, I one honest, thank you, Joanna. But, uh, but that in no way diminishes your love. In fact, it's a sign of your love. If they're doing stupid, irrational, wicked, naughty, whatever things, you have every right to be angry. And so God has far more right. And he's angry. How will stand before this God? But he sent his son as the Elasmus, the one who they're torn in sacrifice, who turns away God's wrath and makes God propitious and accepts this. It's wonderful. It's the greatest thing in the world, in the universe. And it's all to Jesus. It's, it's amazing. And he comes. 
You see, these things are necessary and he, because he's done all these things that you and I can be right with God. Once you're right with God, then you can start living. And, um, and he's done that. So let's just go on then. Let's unpack it a bit. Because if we're doing Hebrews, we have to unpack this. What is this high priest business? It's not where I was brought up. Well, just as because Shay did it a few weeks ago, so let me remind you. God is teaching through Israel. Israel is the, main, the great visual aid to the world. They were meant to show the world what the living God is like. And he's saying, you cannot approach me as you are. But he made provision. You have sinned. The soul that sins, it shall die. You will be separated. That's how it works. But in his incredible grace, he says a dumb animal can die in your place. That's the allowance he does. And so in the Old Testament, you've got this massive, through Moses and all the other people, is instituted this great sacrificial system. It's wonderful. It's really wonderful. God is desperate that we might get to know him. So he's provided this. Now, in order that it's carried out, a whole caste of people called high priests or called priests are set up from Aaron and the, the tribe of Levi. And they ensure that these regulations are carried out to the letter. God is teaching, sin is serious. We're not trifling. That animal dies. You cut its throat, the blood flows. It's horrible. Yes, so is sin. That's what he's teaching, right? That's why I tell you that. Now, there are many more aspects to sacrifice than, than that. I appreciate that. The system. And the high priest is the, in charge of it all. Now, the high priest, you recognize him. He was probably the most important man in the land, even, even higher than the king. And he has his turban, and he has his robes, and he has a, a breastplate, and a breastplate has 12 stones. Each stone represents the tribes of Israel, a tribe of Israel, one of the 12 tribes. And then also he has a, a waistcoat thing, an ephod, and he has the names also, again, of the tribes on the ephod. So that when he's done his sacrifice, sacrifice the animal for the people, the annual sacrifice, for instance, he takes the blood into the holy place, and he, rep he takes the people, the names of the people with him. He represents them, right? He's still with him. And that's, that's really what it's all about. He, um, but, and there were 83 high priests from Aaron to Jesus. So we've gotten to Jesus now, right? The problem with these, high, with these priests is they had a bad habit. They kept dying. They kept dying. And, uh, you know, the job was never done. It was never done. It, was, it went on in year after year. And then it says they need to offer sacrifice day after day, first for their own sin and then for the sin of the people. And so every morning the priest would go out and there's a great long line. Oh, my goodness me. With all the goats and the sheep and, oh, my. All that long line to do. And then if you say, if you see someone say, oh, blow, not him again. And then the priest realized, I have sinned myself. <laughs> so I've got to sacrifice myself now because <laughs> he's blown it, you know. <laughs> but it goes on and on and on and on and on, you see. And then um, it's relentless. Now in the, in the tabernacle and when the temple when it's built, there is in the holy place, you go from the court of the Gentiles into the holy place. You have three things. You have a table. You have a candelabra because there's no windows. And you have a, an altar. What there isn't, there are no chairs because you never sit down because <laughs> the job is never done. Right? Still with me? And, um, and so year after year, Line after line, it goes on. But, Jesus, but God has given us a high priest. This is why, I mean, Jesus has many roles, and this is one of them. 
And he's offered one sacrifice, even himself, not just a dumb animal, he's offered himself, right? And he, the writer, whoever the writer of the Hebrew says, who, he, Jesus who lives forever and he has become a permanent priesthood. He's, he's sinless and, and perfect. He's sinless and, and, you know, he's free from sin. He's holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted high above the heavens. Now, where is he now? You often think, where are my school friends? I know some of you, it's about 200 years since some of you left school. But I don't know, do you have to think that? Richard, where are they now? I, I think, where is Jesus this Sunday morning, 14th of August? Where is he? I'll tell you where he is. Now, I know in one sense it's symbolic, but the symbol is greater. The reality is bigger than the symbol. He is at the right hand of God, seated, making intercession for us. Now, just, first of all, he is for you, right? He is for you. Just as the high priest went into the holy place, represented with the gems on his chest and the names on his chest of every tribe, so Jesus goes into the presence of God with your name on your, his heart as he goes in, if, if you've committed your way to him. He, represent, he knows all about you. He knows all about you. And he's made the one sacrifice that covers all your sins, past, present, and future. But you have to avail yourself to them. But the second thing is, and, and Shea reminded us of this the other day, he knows all about us. We do not have a high priest, says the Bible, that, you know, that uh, doesn't understand us, is unable to understand us, unsympathetic with us in our weakness, but one who is tempted in every way as we are. And yet without sin, he understands. Are you sure he understands me, what I've been through? I remember my, one of my great mentors, a great friend of mine, he went to see his great hero. He was a great preacher. He was retired on the South Coast. He was a great preacher in Leeds and big in London. I've got some of his books. Not my theology uh, at all. <laughs> but we won't go down that one. But he was a great preacher. could really preach. So he went to see him because he's always... I admired his preaching. And he went to see him and he said, you couldn't believe it. He said to him, Jesus doesn't understand me at all. And my friend was shocked, put it mildly. His hero said that. Well, he said, he never got old, Jesus. He never was sick and this man was, he had some condition, serious condition. And thirdly, he never lost his wife. Jesus never lost his wife. And so my friend was really, I say flummox wasn't the word, but, but he said, I just prayed. And the Lord said to him, reminded him, that on the cross, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in that moment, Jesus experienced such a depth of dereliction, pain and anguish and strife and whatever other word you want to use, that would be far greater than any of us could ever comprehend, no matter how dark the night you're passing through, no matter what a battle you're going through, he has been through a deeper, more painful one. So I have to say this, and I guess some of you are going through a hard time. He understands, and that's what the rice says. But the third thing, not only is he for you, not only does he know you, he's with you. He's with you. He's with you. He says that. He says, he, will, he says, for when, well, Paul says, for when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. Having been reconciled by his death, how much more shall we be saved in his life? In fact, if Jesus' death won for us victory, what more now will his intercession, his life win for us? That's what he's saying. He's not going to leave you. That's what he's doing this morning. One of our friends, who you all know him, well, many of you know him, Nigel Smith used to, a great friend of ours. And, and Nigel used to, to work at the RAF Halton, among other things, after he left the forces. But you could go down to Halton, and if you wanted, you could go up in a glider. Wonderful experience. I didn't go. A coward that I am. But, you know, what you do is, and he was quite keen, we went, you know, you, you sit behind a pilot and the pilot's trained and then you're dragged up with a cord 
by a prop plane at the front and off you go from Holton and you get up a certain height and you see the Chiltern Escarpment and the beautiful, you know, the Vale of Aylesbury then into Oxford. But you get to a certain height and the two pilots agree and the one, in, the one pilot says to the front, you're on your own now and the cord is, le- is dropped. It's dropped and you're on your own. Or well, the pilot who's navigating you on <laughs> to get you back to RF Holton. I want to tell you this. Jesus never says that. You're on your own now. Some of you are going to go out that door and I guess financially things are desperate or marriagely things are desperate or with the kids things are hard or with your health things are hard. I want to tell you this. Jesus doesn't say, right, it's great here, lovely with all these lovely people, but you're on your own. He never says that. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Never. And... um, and he's at the right hand of God, he says. And he's also interceding for us, right? He's praying for you this morning. I haven't time to go into all the details. That's it's that whole series. Is. But he's praying for you. And, um, <laughs> you know, our prayers are pretty feeble. Really. So why aren't my prayers answered? Well, actually, I guess because we don't always ask in the will of God. Didn't, didn't come back to pass because it didn't, wasn't in the will of God. But Jesus always prays in the will of his Father. His prayers are always answered. Now, if we could time, we could look through John 17, which is the Lord's Prayer, if you like, and, and different things he prays for. Father, protect them. Because it's a warfare. It's hard being a Christian. There's a whole spiritual army set against you. And Jesus is praying for them. I'm praying for them. But not only that, he says, Father, sanctify them. He's praying that you may become like him. He's praying also, you know, that you, that you might know his love. Verse 23, that they might, you might know they're loved. You will love them as you love me. A most amazing thing. And there are many more, which we haven't time to go into. And, and he's praying for you. And that's why his prayers are answered. Are answered. And, um, and so... We, we have to know that. I just want you to know that, that he's praying for you. He's advocating for you before the Father. <laughs> he's on your side. Well, don't we slip and fall? I mean, look at Peter. He's a classic. Peter says, I'll never fail. I'll never let you. I'll never fail you, you know. Everybody else will, but not me. No. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you like wheat, right? But I have prayed for you, right? That your faith may not fail. And when you have turned, strengthen the brethren, the brothers, sisters. But didn't his faith fail? His faith didn't fail, his witness did. But God, Jesus pulled him through and he led the church. And he's praying for it this morning, right? And now this is the text I want us, can we put it up? Uh, Hebrews 7.25. Let's just, for the last few minutes, let's just, let me try and get this into your heart, right? Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. Because he always lives to intercede for them. Now then, be careful here, Richard. If you were going for a tattoo, and this is what I would recommend. <laughs> Completely on one arm, always on the other, right? Delete all that. Don't ever leave the King's Church and the guy at the church said, we're going to have to have a tattoo. It is just an illustration. <laughs> Completely, always, so that you will never Forget. That's all I'm saying, right? See, quickly, three things. He's going to save you. Because he wants to make you like himself. He wants to make you, the Father's will and the Spirit's will and the Son's will are to make you like Jesus in your character. The first thing, he saves you from the, 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 the sin and the guilt of the past. That's what he does. These are just headings, headings, right? <laughs> He wants to free you from the past, the guilt. Because we do do terrible things. You know, some things 
I'm ashamed of. I thought, and I can't go to God again with that. And when I go, I say, oh, here he comes again. No, he didn't do that. But he just, you don't realize what I've done, the terrible things I'm ashamed of. I've told no, but not even the pastor. He's, there's nothing that he will not forgive, my friends, if it's confessed. Well, you, yeah, you don't realize, I've done terrible, I haven't told my wife. You know, I, if you want to be free, you have to confess it, and the only way to get rid of it is out of your mouth. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful. And just because Jesus died, he has to forgive you in, in a real sense, in a legal sense, because Jesus died and taken that sin. If we confess it, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all sin. Right? It's wonderful. So we have to realize that he comes to, he comes to deal with us. There's no sin beyond the power of God to forgive. Well, yeah, but you don't realize how badly, and I've done it again. I'm such a miserable son, so and I've done it again and again. Paul says, look, if he spared not his own son, will he not also freely with him give us all things? He's done the hard thing. Just avail yourself. And actually, you have to confess before people. You have to do it, not necessarily here, but some places. I think that's quite important for your, for your, own, sancti for your own sanctification. But that's another story. He said, it was a completely, utterly, you know, Oh, no, I've gone too far. I've gone too far. No, no you've not gone too far. He, he's able to save completely, utterly. You misjudge God. There's nothing that God will not do for you. He sent his, he sent his son. But secondly, he comes to save us from not just the guilt of sin, but from the power of sin. Some of you come and we feel defeated in life. Look, Paul, we haven't time to unpack all this, but Paul says to Romans, look, sin shall not be your master. You're not programmed to sin forever. You don't have to be like your uncle so-and-so because he was a so-and-so. You know, you're not programmed to sin. Now, we have to follow the biblical ways to get out of this, but Jesus has come to deal with this. That's what he's praying for. You see, it's like, a bit like a, a deep-sea diver and you see them at the floor of the, the sea, and it's pitch black most of down there. It's high pressure and dark. How do they survive? Because there's a, an oxygen pipe from the boat. In the same way, Jesus sends the Spirit. Now, I know the Spirit is not a gas. I realize he's a person. But he sends the Spirit. He gives liberally when we ask him. And he sends, when we cry out for help, he, he gives help. He comes. And he, and he prays, and, and he prays for us, that the Spirit, we might know that we are loved. Now, we, we can't do that by working it up, we need the Spirit. But he, he always lives to intercede for us. And um, that's always, 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 because it all, that's why you're going to say, you will not fail as a Christian, my friends, as long as Jesus is interceding for you, Right? He always, but surely he's going to stop. Surely, surely he's going to stop sometime. There must be an expiry date. No, no. He always, always lives to intercede. Yeah, but there must be a shelf life for his prayer. No, no. Always. But don't, so the best friendships fall. Yes, they do, but his doesn't. The best marriage in the world will be separated by death. But he always intercedes for you. Nothing. She says, Paul says, nothing will separate from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Right? Always. And, uh, you know, that's how it works. It's not as well he'll, he'll do it as long as we're faithful. No, we have to keep coming to him. I appreciate that. Right? But, you know, we, we keep, we must keep coming to him. Because he, he lives Always. To intercede for us. And that's what it's about. But we're not saved yet. And we're half saved. We're half saved. Because he's going to save us. This sermon does end, by the way. Don't lose heart. <laughs> he saves us from the guilt of sin. And, and he, from the power of sin, you can be an overcomer. But also he will save us from the presence of sin. 
I mean, we've had, this last year I found it really hard. The last six, I've taken three funerals of three of my best friends. Why do we get comfort? Because I know, because of their faith in Christ, that they've gone straight into his nearer presence. Not their bodies. Their bodies have been burnt or buried. But Jesus said on the cross, today you'll be with him in And So their spirits are with the Lord. And, you know, as Jude says, you know, they've been, pre- been presented before his glorious presence without fault and with exceeding joy. So isn't that wonderful? That's the God. We're not, but we're not fully saved yet. There's something even more, right? Jesus is going to come back to this earth, right? Right in the clouds of heaven. He's going to come back as victorious. Where he was humiliated, he will come. And when he returns, when the dead just gone, every believer who has died and who is alive will be given a new body. Paul says our citizenship is in heaven. That's where we get our passports from now. And from there, we eagerly await the Savior who will transform, who's able to bring all things under his power, he says, who will transform these lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. It's amazing. That is our hope. Not drifting around. No, we're going to not just be free from the guilt, the power, and the presence, but we shall be like him. Paul says, just as we've borne the likeness of the man from earth, we shall bear the likeness of the man from heaven. I took a funeral last week, and here's the coffin where that player is. How do you, how, where's the good news? The good news is, as Paul says, that which is sown, the body which is sown is perishable, but that which is raised is imperishable. My friends, and your relatives who love the Lord will be raised with new bodies that will never perish, never die, never be diseased. It's sown Dishonor, in dishonorable, but it's raised in glory. Like, it, like Jesus, it's sown in weakness. And my, we always get older, we get weaker, don't we? But it's raised in power. It's sown a mortal body. But it's raised a spiritual body. Not less physical. It'll just be more physical. It'll be more substantial. Not less. But it'll be totally governed and controlled by the Holy Spirit. That's how we're not saved. We're only half saved yet. We've got our spirit saved. Our soul is being saved. But our body's not yet being saved. That is the gospel. We shall be like. John says, when he appears, we shall see him. And we shall be like him. Unbelievable joy and glory and wonder. My friends, a church, don't lose that. You know, it's sown in weakness. My, as we get older, when you, when you get over 55, if you ever get there, Richard, you know, you get weaker. <laughs> but it's, ra- it's sown in weakness, but raised in power. C.S. Lewis puts it wonderfully well. He says, he says, when you're learning to ride, I had to learn to ride once. I had to do it. You are given a very ordinary Horse. I know what they mean, hard mouth and they just plod. <laughs> but it's safer that way. But when you when you when you're a good rider, they will give you a good horse that can gallop and jump. Now I have to say, I sometimes look at these horses on the entry or good I think. I would not like to be on the back of those things. That uh, they would make an F F one car very slow. They really are amazing creatures. But we're going to, Paul says, it's raised, this body sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Somebody says this. The resurrection body is going to have more energy, more capabilities, more stamina, more adaptive athleticism, more speed, more coordination, more adaptability than it ever had before because you are not going to need bodies less but more. We are going to use it more. That's our hope. I say as Christians, as I think John Wimber said, you get very little in one sense in this life. But Jesus, all this is prepared. We are not fully saved yet, but he has promised he is able to save completely, totally, to the utmost, absolutely, those who come to God through him. 
we're in the process. How am I so sure? Because he always, that's why I'm sure, because the Son of God is praying for you. He always, he doesn't have a day off. He always lives to intercede for you. If that isn't good news, I don't know what it is. Right? Before the throne of God above. We're going to sing this now. I have a strong, a perfect plea. A gr- the great high priest whose name is God, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his heart hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts you to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because my sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. Behold him there, church, The risen lamb, the perfect, spotless righteousness, the great unchangeable lamb. He never changes, my friends. The king of glory and of grace. One with him. One with himself. I cannot die. My soul is purchased with his blood. My life is hid with God in Christ. With Christ, my Savior and my God. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God for him because he always lives to make intercession. That is the word of God. You can leave this morning. There will not be a day come when he will not pray for you. There will not a day come when he will, not, when he will leave you. Whatever the economics the finances, the weather bring, he will never leave you. He is committed to you. Right? And all the people said, Amen. Amen.
loved if I do this I'm partially loved because God can't stand this about me and we can turn always to sometimes can't we sometimes I feel love it's when I feel it that's when it's true you know so it's occasionally again when I feel it so occasional, you know. No. Completely. Always. Romans 10, verse 10 says, It is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Some of us right now need to turn those partially and conditionallys into completelys. Some of us need to turn those sometimeses and occasionallys into alwayses. I'm making a word up. I don't know who it is. What if you got confused? You know you're completely loved. It'd be good to confess that now. You know you're always loved, always interceded for, always understood, always valued. That's true. Take a moment or two, each one of us, to confess those conditional, those partials, those sometimes, those occasionallys, and to confess those, say, no, that's not true. Completely, always, they're true. Let's take a moment to confess and to speak the completely and to speak the always over us over ourselves. For those in person, do that now. Those watching online, do that now. of your work. It is finished. Death and sin died on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Completely loved. Completely finished the work of Jesus in our lives. Praise you. And then we look to your resurrection. We can see the always, the eternal in your resurrection as you're seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. The always-ness of the gospel is manifest in the resurrection power and the new life in our lives of the resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. New bodies on the peg in the throne room waiting for us all. Always, always, completely. Praise the Lord. Let's worship Him.
is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And His faithfulness continues to each generation. The Lord, could you applaud the Lord? You can do this online or do this in the room. Let's applaud the Lord. He is good, isn't He? Eternally good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I just want to share before we finish a couple of things. I had a picture this morning. Sometimes the Lord gives pictures to us because he wants to work in someone's lives. A picture of of pain. It's down the left-hand side, base of your spine, left-hand side. And uh, this pain is always there, but it sort of, it increases and then decreases. And if that's you, I believe the Lord wants to touch you this morning, this afternoon rather. Uh, You may be in the room, you may be watching online. Let me tell you how to respond in a moment. I've just got also a picture, and this is quite a brutal picture. I've got a picture of a boxing glove, and it's hitting someone in the face on the left cheek. And it's, I believe there's someone here, and you have received a physical blow, and it changed your life forever. And it was unjust, and it was unrighteous, and you still bear the scars. I'm talking emotional scars, if that's you. The Lord wants to touch you. He wants to redeem that moment of abuse. Well, if you'd like someone to pray with you, whatever reason, we'd love to do that. If you're here with us in person, we've got a prayer space over here on my left, your right. Please do come forward for prayer. For any of those words uh, or for anything at all, we'd love to pray with you. If you're at home, and you'd like someone to pray with you, then just please go to kthw.co.uk forward slash life. Click on the uh, request prayer and someone will be in touch with you to pray this week. If you'd like to give to the work of Kings, whether you're watching uh, online or you're here in person, easiest way to do that is to go to kthw.co.uk forward slash life. All the details how to do that are on there. If you're here in person, you'd like to give in person, then go to the offering boxes at the back of the room and and all the paperwork that you need is there. It's great to be with you. We were going to finish there. If you're watching online, we'd love to see you in person. You're so welcome to join us down here, 9.30, 11.30 every Sunday for the rest of us who are here. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great week and see you again next Sunday. Thank you.